Morning. These masks are tricky. We're delighted that you're here for worship today. Uh, delighted that uh, you've been able to gather as God's people to worship this living God and, uh, and join together as community. Whether you are gathered here in person or online, we thank you for your attendance. For our announcements today, uh, we continue to have a number of opportunities available in our congregation, whether it's Bible studies or uh, confirmation for the young people. This afternoon, there will be a dodgeball tournament for, uh, for the high school youth out on our outdoor lawn, and so middle school and high school. So we're excited to uh, continue to do some of these things. Simultaneously, we acknowledge that the numbers of COVID cases in our county continues to rise. And so we urge you to be cautious regularly. Uh, we're gonna continue to hold services here at King of Glory and we're gonna take precautions like wearing masks, but we also seek to enhance our online worship so that you can take advantage of that. So we've got some new cameras that we're trying out today and uh, we'll continue to work with the online worship uh, to improve that experience. We've made the decision to have communion every week. And part of that decision is to allow you options so that if you are choosing to come to worship infrequently, being safe, 
that you can come any Sunday and know that you'll have communion, that you don't have to uh, aim for the second or the fourth Sunday. So we're trying to spread out the worship attendance for your safety by offering communion every week. We will continue to offer the drive through the parking lot communion on the second and fourth Sundays of every month. Also today, some sad news to share. Today we pray for the family of Don Bott. We've been praying for Don for some time. And yesterday he died, completing his baptismal journey. Don and his wife Barb joined King of Glory last fall after moving here from Sydney, Montana. They moved here to be closer to their daughters Lynette and Kristen, and so today we pray for Don's wife Barb, Barb's sister, King of Glory member Linda Miller, and also King of Glory members Lynette and Chris Clark and their children Reagan and Jackson. We'll keep you updated as far as memorial services for the Bott family. But the family wanted us to express to you their genuine gratitude for the many prayers that you have offered for Don over the last two months. With those announcements, we turn our hearts now to worship, looking to the God who is and was and is to come. Our opening hymn will be up on this screen over here. When disaster comes, 
when danger looms. For we belong to God. This morning, God calls us to be the people of faith in the midst of insignificance, out of brokenness, out of divisiveness, out of self-centeredness, and out of death. We now confess our sins before God and one another. God of all ages, you have given us as your own, yet we so often live as if it were not so. We succumb to things which are not good for us. We refuse to put our trust in your promises. Sweep away our foolishness and bring us back into a trusting relationship with the one who longs to be our strength and life. Dear people, hear the joyful words that God has forgiven us. Our misdeeds and folly are forgotten. Grace and mercy abound. Let us give thanks that we have a compassionate creator. Let us pray. God of might, you protected and guided your chosen people out of danger into new life. Lead us into the places where we can live and grow as your faithful people. For the sake of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at midnight or twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorsteps and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall not let any of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. 
your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this, on, this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by the strength of hand. No, leaven, un, no leavened bread shall be eaten. <clears throat> Today in the month of Abib you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this observance in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there will be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Word of God, word of life. The grace, mercy, and peace to you, Father, and the Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. I keep getting all of these mailings for political candidates. Is anybody else getting piles and piles of these every day in their mailbox? Oh, phew, I was afraid I was the only one. Well, it is that season, isn't it? But if you step back from all the election nonsense and all of the misstatements and the arguing and the bickering and the political gamesmanship, the chief issue is the same issue that has always been. Power. To whom will we give power? Who will act responsibly with the power we give? Who will do the most good with the power we entrust to them? Moving from the political to the personal, Today's text inspires me to ask, who or what has power over you? Whether that power was given or taken from you, who or what has power over you? Power to give you sleepless nights, power to direct your days, power to make demands on your life. Who or what? has this type of power over you. You see, power was the issue present in Moses' day as well. Who would hold power over the Israelites? Was it Pharaoh or was it God? Who would be worshipped by these people? Was it the great and mighty Pharaoh or was it the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Who has who will be God? As the book of Exodus begins, we discover that the Israelites have become slaves in the land of Egypt. Last Sunday, it was a different picture. We heard about Joseph, who was highly respected by the Pharaoh, and thus the Israelites prospered in Egypt. But since Joseph and the end of the book of Genesis, a few hundred years have passed. Yes, a few hundred years. We know from Egyptian records that during this wave of Egyptianism was booming, and there was a deep mistrust of any foreigner, including the Israelites. And over time, the people of God were enslaved in Egypt. To explain all of this, Exodus gives us one line at the beginning of the book. It says, 
a new king arose in Egypt who did not know Joseph. Now, around in Egypt, working conditions were harsh, and the Pharaoh, concerned with an uprising among the slave labor, sets a policy to kill all of the newborn male babies. Moses was among those slated for infanticide. But, as you may remember from Sunday school, he narrowly escapes through the ingenuity of his mother and his sister and a waterproof wicker basket. Moses is up in the house of Pharaoh, but he leaves abruptly as a young man under suspicion circumstances, and it's not until years later that Moses has the encounter with the burning bush, where God tells Moses that God has finally heard the cries of his people, the Israelites, and God sends Moses back to Pharaoh, back to Egypt, with a message, a pointed message for Pharaoh. Now, it's at this point we're finally getting caught up to our reading for today, and you have to channel your inner Charlton Heston, right? For what does Moses say to Pharaoh? Pharaoh, let my people go. But there's actually more. He says, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. That they may worship me. Well, Moses leaves the burning bush, he goes and does as he is told, and a power struggle ensues between God and Pharaoh. Let my people go. No. Let my people go. No. Let my people go. Oh, excuse me, Moses. I don't possession is not law. They're building my buildings, slaving away at my slave labor. These are not God's people. These are my people, says the Pharaoh. They are mine, mine, mine. And it's in this power struggle that the question of who will be God arises. Who will be God? Who will be the one who holds power? Is it Pharaoh or is it the Lord? And in the midst of this power struggle, struggle, we get the ten plagues of Egypt. Remember them? First, Moses turns the Nile to blood. Pharaoh says, I can do that. And then there are frogs. God sends frogs on the land, and Pharaoh's like, "Ah, I like frogs. And gnats, they're tiny, no big deal. And then flies, and then animals become sick. And then boils develop all over the skin of the people in Egypt. And then a hailstorm such as you have never seen before. And locusts devour the rest of the crops. Number nine, darkness covers the land. Leading us to our reading for today that picks up right before the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn. Each time in this power struggle, there is either a hardening of Pharaoh's heart, or he says, "Ah, frogs are no big thing, they'll be gone eventually. Or, after telling Moses that the people can go, Pharaoh shortly thereafter changes his mind and decides that they need to stay. And so the question throughout this book of Exodus remains, Who will be God for these people? Who will be God over the elements and over the creatures? God over hail in the sky and frogs on the ground. But also, who will be God over the Israelites? Who will be God over Pharaoh? Even over generations of oppression and poverty and slavery. Who will be God over this entrenched government system? Who will be God in Egypt? Earlier I asked, who or what has power over you? Whether it was given or taken, who or what has power over you? Power to give sleepless nights, power to direct your days, power to make demands 
in your life, who will be God to you? Well, the old confession acknowledges that we are in bondage to sin, to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. And the notion of sin too often gets narrowed down into some personal moral decision, like gossiping or telling lies or these small things that we do. But in this, we are invited to see sin as a power, a power that we perpetrate, and a power that holds sway over us. We are in to sin and cannot free ourselves. So what will it take for us to be free? God's demand of freedom upon Pharaoh and Pharaoh's subsequent refusal to set the people free ultimately brings us to this last plague, the death of the firstborn. In this plague, we hear echoes earlier in the story. The sin of the nation and the sin of the Pharaoh is revisited upon them. For the Pharaoh called for and the nation allowed the slaughter of innocents. And now God uses that same instrument to finally break Pharaoh's hardened heart so that he releases the Israelites. In our reading for today, God gives Moses instructions. On the night before all this happens, they are to kill a lamb and eat it, but save some of the blood to mark the doorpost of the house. It is the blood of the lamb that marks the households as the people of God. Part of their meal, the Israelites are to eat unleavened bread. Bread, not given time to rise, they are to eat hurriedly with a staff in one hand while they're shoveling food into their mouths with a traveling cloak ready to go. Because God's salvation and God's freedom from Pharaoh is close at hand. The, po the powers that we see in our world today, the powers that battle over us are very real. What will it take for you to be free? What will it take for you to be free of all those things that come to be God in your life? What will it take for you to be free from hurtful words that were said to you or hurtful words that were said by you? free from guilt and shame that won't let go, free from the sin of others that weighs heavily on your soul? What will it take for you to be free from oppression made known by individuals and oppression made known in systems? What will it take for us to be free from our poor choices and free from the power of sin and death and meaninglessness? What will it take for you and me to be free? Not just from all these things, but for life. Free for service. Free for love. Free for generosity and kindness and passion. Free from all the slavery of your Egypt. Free that you may go out and worship the living God. Supper on the night before his own death, Jesus takes upon himself the blood of the lamb of the Passover. But for Jesus, it is his own blood, the blood of the lamb of God that claims us that claims people as God's own people, marking us for salvation. It is Jesus' own body 
the unleavened bread we consume, which points to the imminence of creation. There's no time to waste salvation. And this is freedom given to you by Christ. This is the feast of victory for our God, one of the powers of sin, death, and the devil, a victory with Christ's own death and resurrection. This is the freedom given you in the forgiveness of your sin today. The freedom found in unleavened bread and the blood of the Lamb of God given for you. And so in these days, when not just political candidates ask for power, but the forces of this world, the anxiety of this world, the fear of this world, the hatred of this world seeks to hold power over for us, we again return to the Lord. We return to confession and forgiveness. We return to the God who rec- rescues us from our bondage to sin. We return to the God who meets us with promises in bread and wine. And we share our hope. For as the reading for today concludes, You shall tell your child on that day. You shall tell your child on that day. Why do we do all this? Ah, it's because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. You shall tell your child on that day. This is because of what the Lord did for us when we came out of Egypt. Because of what the Lord did for us when we came out of Egypt, we now join in the feast of victory for our God. Because of what the Lord did for us when we came out of Egypt, we now join the feast of victory for our God. Because of what the Lord did for us when we came out of Egypt, we now join the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.
invite you to stand as you're able. With the lyrics of Lord of all hopefulness lingering in our ears, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us now take time to pray for the church, for the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you have set before a banquet table where all are in to feast. It is because of your blood that we are made one. Whoever is hungry, let them come and eat. Whoever is in need, let them come and be filled. Whoever longs to be transformed by your freedom, let them come. God of compassion, Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work this day and grant new opportunities to those who are in need. Send your peace to the struggles of power in our day and break the bondage to the things that have power over us. God of compassion, Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. We pray especially this day for President Trump, First Lady, as they are recovering from coronavirus. And we remember in our prayers all who are suffering with this invisible virus that is taking such a toll on us and our neighbors and our nation and our world. God of compassion, sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We pray for those who are struggling today, especially for Brody Setter, Tom Helverson, for John Hansen's friend Carl, for Jane Carlson and Brian Jensen, for Cheryl Miller and Anita Simonson. We pray for Cheryl Jones and Carol Tears, for Clayton, and we offer our prayers for the Bott family as they grieve the death of the husband and father and friend, Don. God of compassion, receive these prayers and all those which we offer in silence for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated and hum our hymn for the day.
I invite you to stand as you're able. Today we gather around this banquet table where the Lord of all has invited each of us, stranger or friend, to gather and to eat, to be filled with the peace that only Christ can give. So we remember today that in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The scriptures say that when our children ask in the time to come, what is this all about? That we would have the courage and strength to tell them that this is how the Lord has blessed us. This is how God has led us through the wilderness. This is how our Lord has given us strength for all that lies ahead. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and eat. Taste and be filled. As you go to receive communion on the balcony today, we remind you to stay socially distant and um, to mind the little step as you go onto the concrete. If you cannot go out to the balcony, just alert us and we will be happy to bring you the meal where you're seated.
please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May your week be one of blessing. When your hearts are full, your mind at rest, and your soul stirred to action. And may you find God the Father guiding you, Jesus the Son walking with you, and the Holy Spirit inspiring your days. Amen. In Christ, we welcome all. Grow in grace, serve in love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.